I want to teach from the topic, we inside. We inside. It don't even sound the same, do it? We inside, all right? I want you to take really, really good notes today. This may be as loud as I'm going to get, but I want you to take really, really good notes. Pull your phone out. Pull your notepad out. Take great notes. I really believe if you take what I'm saying today seriously, something's going to shift in your life. Can we make that agreement right there? Look at this. First note of the day. What if I told you that you will discover your purpose where you may experience the most aggravation? Please put that in your notes. What if I told you that you will discover your purpose where you may experience unique aggravation? What if you are anointed the most for what aggravates you the most? What if you are anointed the most for what aggravates you the most? What if I told you you will discover your purpose where you may experience, please write this one word, unique aggravation. Show me what aggravates you uniquely and I may be able to show you what God is calling you to intentionally. The enemy wants us to only see our situation through the lens of aggravation so we can abandon our assignment. Listen to me, church. Be careful if you are labeling something annoying when God sent it to activate your anointing. Be careful if you are labeling something annoying that God is trying to use to activate your anointing. I'm telling you that throughout the Bible, whenever you see aggravation, you see activation. Whenever you see aggravation, you see activation. Everybody standing on the battlefield. Everybody hear Goliath. Everybody chooses to ignore him. David shows up. What he hears from Goliath <clears throat> aggravates him so that it activates him to fight. What if I told you that you are labeling people and stuff annoying, not realizing God is using the annoyance to activate your anointing. The tension often leads to us searching for answers. But what if God isn't giving you the answers you want because he created you to be the answer others need? What if God is not giving you the answers you want because he's waiting on you to become the answer that other people need? Stop looking for answers and start being the answer. And many of you are frustrated because you waiting on God to give you an answer when God is waiting on you to become it. You are aggravated because what you see in your family don't match what he put in your heart. So now you don't go around them because they annoy you. When God was trying to let them aggravate you to become something that they could drive to be. I'm going to say this and only three of y'all going to receive it. If you don't see what you want to be around you, be it so somebody else can see it. I'm going to say this and only 10 people going to receive it. I am the answer. That I don't know what was going on in my family before I got here, but it stops with me. I'm the answer to the debt that my family finds themselves in year after year. I'm the answer that if somebody needs to see what a miracle looks like, it is me. You put this in your notes. God often hides our purpose inside of other people's problems. God often hides our purpose inside of other people's problems. I'm going to say this. I hope you can receive it. You will be remembered for two things. The problems you solve or the problems you caused. The question I want to ask you today is, are you a problem solver? 
<laughs> or are you a problem starter? That's critical, isn't it? What's the big idea, Pastor Mike? Most people never fulfill their purpose because most people never commit to prayer. Most people never fulfill their purpose because most people never commit to prayer. Michael, everybody want to be outside in purpose without committing to going inside for prayer. And I need you to understand that be careful when you are surrounded with people that scream, we outside for the party but won't shout, we inside for prayer. So Pastor Mike, what are you saying to us today? What I am saying to you, if you hear me with your spiritual ear, is that there is a unique assignment that God has birthed, created, crafted, and designed you for. Let me make that make sense. There is a problem around you that God is waiting on you to step up and become the answer to. But maybe you so busy trying to find you, you missing you. Maybe you're so busy trying to find you, you're missing you. Make that make sense, PMJ. I need you to catch this. You will never fulfill your purpose if you do not commit to prayer. And sadly, too much of church has become praise breaks not prayer meetings. So what's prayer, Pastor Mike? Can you put this in your notes? Let's define prayer. Prayer by Dr. Tony Evans is defined as prayer, please write this, is mental or oral communication with God the Father offered in the name of Jesus the Son with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. That's good and you missed it already. Let's define prayer. Dr. Tony Evans defines prayer as mental or oral. I want to I want to call it audible live in church, okay? It's not going to be on the screen. I want you to put it in your notes. Ready? Prayer is mental, oral, or written. We left that off last service cuz you can write a prayer. All right, prayer, watch this, go back, go back. Watch this. Mental, oral communication with God. The Father. So look who's all involved in prayer. It is mental, oral communication with God the Father offered in the name of Jesus the Son with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. That's critical, Pastor Mike. Watch this. When I pray, I put everybody on one call. I pray to God. In the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit behind me giving me assistance. Okay, y'all miss what I just said. All right, oh, it's too many young people at this service. This ain't gonna make no sense. At the nine o'clock, they understood it. We kind of older at the nine, 11.30, y'all too young. Y'all ain't gonna get this. Who remember when three-way first got invented? Okay, you remember that? You remember when they told you, you know they said, you can click over call somebody else, then all y'all be on one call. You remember when your mama said, hold on real quick, just hold on, Shirley, hold on, hold on. Do, 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 do. Hello? Hey, Le Le Lucia, hold on. Boom. Shirley, yeah, Lucia. Go, we on three-way. You remember that? Remember when you could click over and call one friend, call another friend? Remember when your boyfriend got caught talking to somebody at another school? And then you told him, no, you call her on three-way. And tell her you're going to break up with Who remember that? Look at all the toxic people. All y'all toxic. Look at you. Remember that? You remember how complicated it was? Here's the problem. I could hang up and call you. But after I called you, I couldn't call nobody else. And if anybody called me, it would be busy. Meaning I couldn't put everybody. Prayer is like a FaceTime audio. You ever got a family group or a friend group that if one of them press dial in that group, everybody in the group get a, a notification, they ask what it do. It says what? Join. So when I pray, it is me putting God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, all on one call. God, 
you can fix it. You're going to do it in your son's name. And if I don't have the right words, the Holy Spirit is assisting me. I don't think y'all heard what I just said right there. So prayer, put this in your notes. All right, put this in your notes. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it again. I got excited. I'm sorry. I got excited. Okay, prayer is mental pause. I want to I debunk that, especially to my teenagers, because a lot of us was raised in church with this religious pressure that's not realistic. It's not biblical. I was taught that when you pray, you better say it out loud. Remember that? Remember when you be praying underneath your breath? God can't hear that. We are so theatrical in church that you actually believe the louder you are, the more powerful it has. Father God, it's me in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now you're taking me from glory to glory. There's power in that. But the power ain't from her volume. It's from her submission. Michael. So, so look at this. Prayer is, can you underline this in your notes? Mental all my prayers aren't oral look at the church folk looking at me like pastor you lying okay have you ever been in a situation where something was happening in real time and your flesh was like pop off your brain was like oh they got the right one so you sitting there looking with your eyes but they don't have a clue in your mind Father God, give me the strength not to go to jail today before I hurt somebody. Lord, if you don't mind, just let me walk away right now. Let me walk. Because I was talking to... Because prayer, please put this in your notes, it is mental. There are times when I'm driving and I never say nothing out my mouth, but in my head I'm talking to God. Yeah. There are times when I'm not, I, I may never say anything out my mouth, but in my mind, God, give me the strength to do X, Y, Z. You're going to be in a game, Thompson. You're going to be in a game and somebody's going to be lined up against you. Big game and big moment. And what you're going to do in your head is, God, give me grace. 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 Because I can talk to God in my mind. Watch this. I can speak to him orally. Now, let me, let me parenthetically digress. I don't want you to become so comfortable talking to him in your mind that you don't use your words. Because death and life, Michael, are in the power of your tongue. And after a little while, if you really believe what you're thinking, you're going to be bold enough to speak it. But it is also, so, so Dr. Tony Evans says, it is mental oral communication with God the Father offered in the name of Jesus with the assistance. The assistance of the Holy Spirit. We, we were tripping. Here's Pastor Leslie and Pastor Darius's definition. In between services and before we preach, I always get with them because I never want to preach a message that solely comes from me. I like perspective. Perspective is important because I have multiplicity of people coming to my church. I want to make sure I speak to as many people as I can. So it can't be solely just what I'm thinking sometimes. That's why the synoptic gospels are so powerful. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They all four see the same thing but express it a different way. They said, put this in your notes, Rock City's definition of prayer. It is a mental, oral, or written conversation. Here's the important word, two-sided. It is two-sided. What does that mean, Pastor Mike? Prayer ain't prayer if you the only one talking. <laughs> prayer is a two-sided conversation. Can I ask you a friend? Can I ask you a question? You don't like answering the call of the friend who do all the talking. You ever been on the phone with somebody and you set your phone down and walked off and they never even knew you left? Because the whole conversation, you ain't going to like this, but I think heaven got some of y'all on hold. Because prayer, look at me, is a mental, oral, or written conversation. Look at the notes. Two-sided with God the Father, Holy Spirit, had in hopes of expressing, listen to this, emotion, watch this, both positive or negative. All right, listen to your pastor. Prayer is not always positive. Some of you don't pray as much because you feel like if you ain't got nothing good to say, you ought to just be quiet. 
a real authentic relationship with God is expressed based off of what you are really going through. Y'all don't like me today. It is in hopes of expressing emotion. Please put that in your notes. Negative and positive. Okay. There are times when I talk to God and it ain't positive. Yeah. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for waking me up this morning. But God, I'm just being honest with you. Like, like what, what's going on? I'm doing everything you called me to do. I'm seeing people get blessed with stuff who I know not going to help nobody else. And God, I'm frustrated. I'm tired of them. It's like every time I go around them, then Pastor Mike, no, you complain. I'm not complaining. I'm talking to the one <laughs> who actually has the power to fix my situation. Y'all don't like me today. Y'all don't like me today. Why is that important, PMJ? Because there are certain type of prayers you can pray. Sometimes I pray intercessory prayers. Spell it the best way you can, intercessory prayers. Now, what's an intercessory prayer, PMJ? An intercessory prayer is not when I pray for you. It's when I pray as you. Y'all miss what I just said. An intercessory prayer is not when I say, Lord, bless Tiffany. Lord, bless Mason. Lord, bless Tim. No, intercessory prayer is when you don't have the strength to pray for yourself. So I go to God on your behalf. I step up and say, God, it's me, Tim. And I'm asking you to bless me and my family right now. I am literally standing in the gap. See, you ain't prayed for somebody till you pray not just for them, but you have to pray as them. Jesus, it is intercessory. But then there are also something called imprecatory prayers. Yeah. David gets frustrated with God and he says, God, why are you hiding from me? Where's your hand? Did you bring me out here just to die? There are also imprecatory prayers where David says, Lord, kill all my enemies. Just kill every one of them. Of course, God does not always oblige. But what I'm saying is David had the type of relationship where he could be himself with God. He could be honest with God. So what's the goal of prayer? Please put this in your notes. Prayer increases our intimacy with God. Prayer, Leslie, increases, back a slide, increases our intimacy with God. It expresses our dependency on God and it invites divine involvement. I'm gonna sit there for a minute, okay? Prayer, all of this is so important. Prayer increases, so in your notes, when you write this, I want you to underline increases and in intimacy. It increases our intimacy with God. Okay, all my singles, give me a what, what? How I'm gonna know if we got chemistry Unless I do what? Spend time with you. Prayer <laughs> increases our intimacy. It gives me the ability to see into me. So watch this. It increases my intimacy. Number two, it expresses, that's a strong word, underlined expresses, my dependency. That's so important, family. Overflow online right now. That is so important. It expresses my dependency. What does dependency mean? Literally, I'm what? Dependent. No, go, go deeper. I need you. No, dependency means I need you. Dependency means I can't do this without you. Dependency means I ain't going if you don't come. Dependency means if you don't give me a yes, it's always a no. Dependency means I prayed, you didn't answer, so I'm still on hold. I'm not moving without you. And what I've discovered is a lot of us pray, don't get what we want or the word we want, and we move when God is saying, sit there till you hear back from heaven. So what does it do? It increases our intimacy with God. Prayer expresses our dependency on God. Prayer, number three, invites divine involvement that's rich it invites divine involvement my, my son miles 
I fell asleep on the couch. Miles want to be Mason more than anything in the world. He don't even want to be me. He want to be Mason. Mason put on a certain outfit to go to bed. The next night, Miles got the exact same outfit on. Mason walk around with no shirt. Miles ain't going to have a shirt. Mason want long hair. Miles, they, they, I mean, it, that's his hero. He, he love Mason, right? All right, so I go in the den the other night. Mason on one couch sleep. Miles on the other couch sleep. Both of them my boys, right? Mason's the baby boy out of the big three. Miles is the baby boy out of all of them, right? And I, I had a minute I just looked at both of them right so I looked and said oh I kick Mason go get in your bed get up go get in your bed yes sir boom he too big <laughs> how I look picking up 160 and just walking into his room Miles my baby boy I pick Miles up all right Miles throw his arms around me wrap his leg around me got comfortable I saw him peek but he realized if dad gonna carry me to the bed. He gonna get me where I need to be. I don't have a conversation with Miles. I don't tell Miles, get up. Because I know in this season of his life, he is so dependent upon me. Watch this. I make the decision for Miles. Pick him up, boom. Put him in his room, put him in the bed, put cover over him. Thank you, daddy. Walk out the room. Miles is in a season where he's dependent upon me. Watch this. Now, when Mason calls and asks me something, it honestly means more to me when Mason calls me versus when Miles calls me. Miles calls me because he don't have a choice. Mason calls me because he chose me. So when Mason calls me, I smile because what he's saying is I could do this by myself but dad I don't want to do it you want to buy you got enough sense to pick whatever job you want to work on you got enough sense to pick whoever you want to date what I'm saying is talk to God so you can show God God I'm getting ready to make a decision but I don't want to do it I know you don't want to say amen because you grown and I can do what I want to do that's why your grown boy go through the same stuff year after year but some of us are in a place where we're saying, God, I don't want to do it with you. It ain't, I get it again, I got it. It ain't deep. I don't want to date without you. Yeah, I was on a call this week where literally it was like, so what you going to do, Pastor Mike? Let me pray about it. My publicist joked and said, do you have to pray about everything? Yes. Yes. I, I, it, it may sound finite to you. Watch this. I see the opportunity. God sees what's behind it. Oh my God, I don't think you heard what I said. I see the opportunity. God sees what's behind it. So before I open a door, I need God to go in the room to make sure the room is clear. Now I know this ain't popular because you independent and you don't need nobody and you self-made. All the culture got y'all thinking you got to be self-made. I am not self-made. I am God-made. And because I'm God-made, every time I do something, I'm going to go back to God to make sure I'm in his. I, I got to, I begin too excited. He, hear me? So what does that mean, Pastor Mike? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. It expresses our dependency. 30 and below, hear me, you need him. Please hear me, you need him. Don't move without him. Pastor Mike, but I don't know how to pray like y'all pray. Do you know how to text? Do that, do that. In my phone, I'm giving y'all my secret now, I got my name saved, right? Whenever I feel like I need to express something that I cannot find the words, I text myself. That's gonna mess seven of y'all up. I will text Mike. Mike, I know you're frustrated. We don't know what to do. Maybe you should just chill. My phone goes off. Mike, I know you don't understand what's going on. Maybe you should just chill. I respond to Mike, but it seems like we're going to get a whole lot of money if I just say yes. Boom. Then Mike responds to Mike, but is this God's will? Be still. That may sound funny to you, but many of you keep falling into traps because you stuck with all this wrestling in your head and you don't have a place where you can express it. And what I'm telling you is in my life, I'm not moving till I talk to God. 
And what I'm trying to get you to understand is it is a two-sided conversation, and this is what's so important. Listen to your pastor when I say this. When I tell you I'm in a series entitled I Got Away, I told you I Got Away is not about escaping but enduring. Michael, God won't always take you out of it. I've said it once, and I'll say it again if you want to write it. God will never take you out of what he can develop you in. Michael, God will never take you out of what he can develop you in. Last week, I told you that God goes to Jonah and tells Jonah, go preach to your enemies. Jonah don't like that. Go love your enemies. You tripping. Go preach to your enemies. You tripping. Go save the people who've been killing everybody just like you. God, you tripping. So what does Jonah do? Jonah goes in the opposite direction. And don't sit in here and look at me like God ain't never called you to do something you didn't want to do. Like your spirit wasn't telling you to be nice to some nasty people. Jonah says no. Look at me. Jonah goes in the opposite direction. You know the story. We went through it last week, right? He goes the opposite direction. He gets on a boat. A storm breaks loose on the boat. This can preach. And while the storm is breaking loose, he's at the bottom of the boat sleep. And the question I want to ask six or seven of y'all today is that when you look in your life and all these storms are happening, how you sleep at a time like this? How your family on the verge of falling out with everybody, yet you good because you living right? No, he's, he, he sleep at a time like this. And you know the story. Jonah gets up, prays to God, and tells the people, I'm the problem. They pick Jonah up, and they throw him off the boat. Let's pick up right here. Verse 15. Then the sailors picked Jonah up, threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. Please write this if you don't mind. Some storms won't stop until the wrong people leave. <laughs> some storms won't stop till you throw some people off your boat. Michael, hear me when I say this. So as we pick up this week, Jonah gets thrown off the boat. Can, can I paint the picture for you? Storm break loose, whoosh. Jonah tells them, it's my fault. He doesn't have the strength to remove himself. They remove him. They throw him over the boat. Verse 17, enough to tear the church up. Now the Lord had arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah. Now, I got to pause in a minute because I got a lot of young people right here. And if you listen to TikTok, they're going to tell you this story never happened. Ain't no fish big enough to swallow no man. Y'all listen to that foolishness if you want to. That preacher got y'all listening to these fairy tales. Show me the fish. I had one guy this week who saw my sermon last week inboxed me and gave me a diagram of every fish known to man from the biggest killer whale all the way down to a guppy he said now show me which one of these fish swallowed Jonah and stop lying to these people because on this graph based off of every fish we know that's classified ain't no fish big enough to swallow a man whole I hit him back and said you're absolutely right so you're beautifully admitting that you telling people lies I said no I said, go look at verse 17. He said, what is it about verse 17? I said, we're not going to find a fish that can do it. Why? Because verse 17 says, the Lord, Michael, arranged. Y'all don't get it. No. Which means what you see is natural. God had to hand make something for his escape. And six of y'all can't figure out why folk don't like you. It's because they saw you, saw your cousin, saw your friend, saw your co-workers, and can't figure out how you got where you are. Because God arranged some stuff. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but if you know if it had not been for God, you ought to just jump up and shout, he arranged. I'm in the wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. Look down your row and say, he arranged it. Hold on, right here. So the Lord, watch this. God looked over and said, that's too small. That's big, but it can't just do it fully. So here's what I'm going to do. Because I got to get Jonah where I want him. Ordinary just won't do. So the scripture says, the Lord arranged a great so in your notes watch this in your notes I want you to put verse 17 
I'm trying not to go there today and just talk. I'm getting excited, bro. Hear me. So I want you to write verse 17, and I want you to put underline arranged. Underline Lord. Watch this. The Lord hmm, arranged. Because sometimes stuff jump off in your life, and you can't figure out why it happened the way it happened. You had no idea that behind the scenes, God was arranging stuff. Put scripture on it. The steps of a good man are arranged, are ordered, watch this, by God. And for five of y'all who got people, you getting ready to start a business this year. You think about taking your relationship to the next level. You think about going back to school. You telling your circle you're going to be different. And then folk looking at you like, well, how you going to do all that? Oh, your whole clap back for 2024 going to be, he arranging something. I wish I had a thousand people in overflow in the room and online that had just put fire signs, jump up and shout, he's arranging something. I ain't got the credit to do it. He's arranging it. I ain't got the pedigree to do it. He's arranging it. You ought to slap three people high five and shout, he's arranging. Right, stop, right. He's arranging it. Yeah, yeah. I bet the next time you go through some hell, you're going to look back and be like, <laughs> God. Okay, all right, watch this. Stay right there. Okay, stay right there. Can I not play the game where I preach, but I can't say stir something to the end when you already know the story? Okay, watch this. So Jonah should have been going to Nineveh. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. Where does he go? To Joppa. The scripture says he went what? Down. Which means he's going in the opposite direction. Y'all missed it. Nineveh over here. Jonah... Because he went down, down here. So God like, how? I'm going to get Jonah from over here to over there. I'm going to have to. Watch this. I'm not going to arrange some trouble. Jonah think he in trouble. I'm inside of a fish. Jonah had no clue that what he saw as trouble God was using his transportation. Michael. <laughs> Six of y'all need to change five numbers in your phone to transportation. I ain't have no patience before them, but God needed to get me the patience, so he used that fool right there to take me all the way I needed. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. But I got a prophetic word for five of y'all. Stop crying about whatever you're going through right now. It's just God arranging you transportation to your next level. Sometimes God uses a season of being broke to transport you to your prosperity because you're going to get some wisdom in your brokenness. Sit down. Sit down. We're not doing it today. Sit down. Sit down. No. No. We're not doing that today. We're just talking. You can't do this. Look, it's, in church, you can't do this, this, or this. None of that. All right. So, so, watch, so watch this. Put first. Hey, put my scripture on the screen. 17. Put it up there. 17. Okay. So what we underlining? What? What? Okay. I'm going to keep reading. You tell me the next thing we should underline. Now, the Lord had arranged for a great fish. Okay. <laughs> he arranged a what? I, I want to pause, parenthetically digress. We were tripping in the back, right? So our writing team, our teaching team is me, my brother, Pastor Darius, and Pastor Leslie, okay? So when I tell you our text thread, be nothing but, it, it can get, it can get, it gets sticky, that text thread, all right? Like, it gets sticky. D will put something, we can say so-and-so, so-and-so. Leslie will come back. Well, technically, you can't say that based off of first century Palestine. The D come back, well, you can say it based off of, and I just be in the middle, like, seriously? What? Huh? I'll be knowing that. I'll be like, y'all, come on. Because iron sharpens iron. Leslie said something in the text thread that messed me up. Okay? She said it's so good, I'm going to read it. Okay? 
Leslie said, Pastor Mike, the text says that the Lord provided, some translations, a great fish to swallow Jonah. The word provided comes from the root word manna. It has been the subject of various translations. In the King James, it is rendered prepared. So when it says the Lord arranged, that means the Lord prepared, which means he created a special fish just for Jonah. That ain't the shout. The best part is while God indeed may have prepared the fish, what most scholars believe is that the text only indicates that if God did not make it specially, the scripture says he summonsed it. Okay, I'm going to mess you up. Here's what I got from it. In the beginning, God created heavens and earth. He made crawling things, flying things, which means, in my opinion, the fish that swallowed Jonah was made on the spot because he's the alpha and the omega, which means God was in Genesis, walking through Exodus, walking through Leviticus, peeped off in Jonah and said, oh, go back to Genesis. I'm gonna need some for Jonah tomorrow. You worried about what you going through in April. You don't even realize last March, God was preparing some stuff. Grandmama said, why you trying to figure it out? God already. Watch this. Watch this. So what we gonna underline? I did it again. I keep screaming. I'm sorry. The Lord arranged a what? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to say fish. Y the, he, alar he arranged a what? Grace. A what? Grace. Oh, hold on, hold on. He arranged a what? Grace. Great fish. Okay. So the Lord arranged a great what? Fish. He arranged a what? Great fish. He arranged a great problem. <laughs> he arranged some great pain. He arranged some great betrayal. See, because if where you on ain't small, if where you going ain't small, he can't arrange something small. Sometimes you go through great stuff because you headed to some great place. I'm not preaching to everybody, but some of my pain been great pain. Some of my betrayal been great betrayal. Some of my hurt been great hurt. But the reason I ain't lost my mind, because even if it's great, my great God been I gotta stop. Yeah. He said, nah. No, nah, I got you. He arranged, or he what? Prepared. It's critical. What did he prepare for you, church? A great fish. I wanna say this. Put this in your notes. Am I doing okay? All right, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's critical. It's critical, okay? Sometimes arrangement don't look like arrangements. All right. Can he say it again? Sometimes arrangements don't look like arrangements. Y'all remember about four or five months ago, I told you my son was in a wreck, right? Y'all remember that? So he totaled the car, right? Raise your hand so they can see who you are. Right there. So, so he, that's Xander, all right? That's my oldest. So he wrecked his car. I pull up to the car, car scene, car total. Hear me, it, it, to this day, I can't get the image out of my head, okay? All I see is him in the driver's seat, people pulling. So in my head, I, I, and it's weird because I never panicked. I just walked, hey, how y'all doing, y'all come on. Because God made me a promise. So I'm like, no, God, my baby's covered, so and so, so and so. I went from the panic, I went from to give the devil no credit. Boom, we take him to the hospital. He was sore, a couple bruised, boom, pull him out. Booyah, all right? So he been having to be little boy since then, okay? No, no, he not made, he, his daddy ain't the Rockefellers. No, you wreck a car, you gotta wait. You, you gotta, I need that insurance check to come back. Am I preaching to anybody? So for five months, he been like, Dad, can you take me to school? Yep, I'm taking him to school in the morning, dropping him off loud. Have a good day, Zan. Yeah, come on, man, come on, bro. All that good stuff, okay? Well, check came Thursday, right? Insurance check came Thursday. So this weekend, I called him. I said, hey, uh, I need your help doing something. 
it was a test. Come on. I missed it. Because if you only want to be with me when I'm giving, that proves your motives. I said, Zand, I need some help doing some stuff this weekend, right? He was like, all right, I got you, I got you. Boom, he jumped up, boom, put him in the car. I'm like, all right, I said, we're going to go get it. I said, no, nah, bro, man, your check came. We're going to go find you something to drive, right? He was like, oh, okay, 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 okay. See, but th this is critical, though. When I woke him up, he probably thought he was going to be over at the church cleaning out a closet, working something out. The arrangement don't always look like an arrangement. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let, me, let me see. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so you want a good wife, right? So, bro, you want a good wife? All right, so sometimes God says, okay, in order to have a good wife, you're going to have to be a good husband. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you date her and let her show you what you don't want so you'll be able to recognize. In other words, I'm a link. I feel like the meme, like y'all, y'all don't see what I'm trying to preach to y'all today. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask this question: Whoever wanted a better job, but then in your head you was like, I ain't finna ruffle no feathers. Then you messed around and got fired. Then some kind of way you ended up at a better job than the one, because sometimes he uses the layoff. Y'all do not like me today. It's in what? In a ring? Okay. Rod, Rod, that's Rod, right? I don't, I don't do a lot without Rod. He produced big. Uh, he helped me with all that. Uh, 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 impossible, all that stuff, right? So whenever we do stuff, all right, I will send him videos of people singing big, okay? Rod gets the utmost irritation because people take his beautiful arrangement and start doing all type of stuff, okay? One dude hit it to you say, that's why you ought to do it like this, and it's gonna be big, 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 big. You ought to do a, a South Africa, big, 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 big. I'm, 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 I'm like, what? Like, time, time. So then Rod at home, like, oh my God, they are butchering my arrangement. That's how God feel about us. God, like, I wish above all things that they be in good health and prosper, even as they, I arrange them to win. Why they keep picking losers? I arrange them to be blessed. Why they keep picking foolishness? But God says, even when you don't pick right, I will cause a great fish to get you where I needed you to be. Because what most people saw the fish as, as trouble, God said it's just transportation. Watch this. So he made the great fish swallow Jonah. Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay. 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 All right. So the Lord arranged a what? Great fish. Great fish to do what? Okay. So, so, okay. I got to say this right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um. If I gave you a piece of steak, it's impossible for you to eat that steak whole. You're going to have to break it down. But God knows if I pick something that's going to devour him, when I get him where I want him, he won't be functional. So I'm going to craft something that will at least ingest him whole. Michael. Because I'm so concerned about your exit that I can't let your entrance kill you. I'm preaching if you receive this. I'm preaching if you receive this. I'm preaching if you receive this. So you so busy waiting to come out. Your biggest praise shouldn't be when God bring you out. Your biggest praise should be he kept you when you went in. I ain't preaching to everybody. But whoever done looked back over your life it was like that right there could have took me all the way out. But if it had not been, oh, I'm trying not to preach today, boy. I'm trying to be dignified. Watch this. Watch this. So, watch this. Watch this. So, the question I got now, all right. Oh, man, I ain't got but three minutes. Okay. 
All right, watch this. Watch. They, they came from Mississippi, so y'all can leave. They, they gonna get the whole message. They want all their gas worth in Jesus' name, all right? So, so watch this, okay, so watch this. Here's why I'm tripping. Okay, okay. People take my sermons and try to do stuff with them sometimes, make it seem like I'm not preaching Jesus. So I have to be careful how I come out sometimes, okay? All right, so, so this is my opinion and my imagination, okay? Did God create the fish on the spot because he was concerned about getting Jonah where he need to be? My, this is my imagination. Or did he make the fish because the people on the boat prayed? Okay, watch this. Remember when the storm broke loose and everybody started praying to their God? The scripture says when the storm broke loose, everybody called on their God. When their God couldn't fix it, they looked at Jonah and said, you need to talk to your God. Watch this, watch this. So when they get, I'm for the read because we never read verse 14. Watch this. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. Oh Lord, they pleaded. It's on the screen. Oh Lord, they pleaded. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. When the storm broke loose, everybody praying to their own God. The moment they see how powerful Jonah's God is, the scripture says, then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. You are so immature to think that you going through hell because God don't like you. Sometimes God pick you in front of people because he's using your problem to convert them. How you come out of it don't make the folk watching you say, God, give me that God and Jesus. I'm preaching to somebody. Three of y'all ought to just bust a 360 and say, if you want favor, look at my God. Now sit down, no. Overflow out of shout, yes. So, so I said, look at this. Then they cried. So look at this. The same people who believed other gods. Look at this. They cried out to Jonah's God. Oh Lord, they pleaded. Don't make us die because it's his fault. Because of this man's sin. And don't, I want to pause. Okay. I, I'm not going to finish early. Don't nobody leave. Whoever get up. You hold up a two if you got to go to work. If you don't hold up a two, I'm going to preach about you. You're officially held hostage in Jesus' name. All right, ushers get on the door. Nobody's leaving. Seriously, folk, or should I say, but spiritually, folk, I want to show you something. I want you to look at everything. The older I get, words matter. When I hear somebody say, you stupid versus that stupid. When they say that stupid, they saying the action, not the person. But now that I'm older, I can hear that. When I was younger, if they said that stupid, you just called me stupid. But now that I'm older, I see stuff differently. Look at this. Oh, Lord, they pleaded. Don't make us die from this man's sin. Hold on. God told him to go preach. He didn't want to preach. He said no. So you mean to tell me him making a decision that's in the best interest of him is a sin? See, because church limits sin to sex. Only sin in the church, let's be honest, the only sin in church is lying, stealing, and sex. Can we, can we just say amen? If somebody catch a hell, well, I wonder, wonder, wonder what's going on with them. No, 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 no. It is a sin to go against the will of God. In hell, going to be killers and bad decision makers. You ain't better than your cousin because they act a fool and live crazy, but you come to church and don't always do what he say. They can at least claim ignorance. Y'all miss what I just said. They can at least say, God, I ain't know no better. What you gonna say? Don't let us die for his sin, look at the scripture, and don't hold us responsible for his death. Meaning we finna throw him overboard. Don't hold that against us. Oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon us for your own good reasons. Next verse, look at what he says. Then the sailors pick up Jonah. Pause, parenthetically digress. Don't put nobody out your life you ain't prayed for first. No, no, they got to get out of my life. I, I agree. But they teach us a principle. They don't throw him overboard. Watch this. Till they pray for him and they ask God to cover them. 
I'm finna say something nobody else will ever tell you. I don't care how toxic they are. Pray for them on their way out. But listen to me, don't clap, listen to me. And pray that God cover you while you cutting them. Watch this, because all of them ain't toxic. It's a piece of them that's toxic. And because it's a piece of them that's toxic, it's also a piece of them that's a blessing. You don't know what you're gonna miss till you cut them out. Did you know 90% of venom is protein? Only 10% of venom is toxic. 10%, sort of like the top. <laughs> so all of it ain't bad. It's that 10% that gets you in trouble. They, the sailors pick up Jonah. Michael, I'm trying not to preach. They throw him into the raging sea. Look at this. And the storm stopped at once. What happens after that, Pastor Mike? I got to get y'all out of here. Y'all tired of me. Y'all tired of me. Now the Lord, now you get it, right? Arranged. Y'all see it now? Now the Lord arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah was inside the fish for three days. Jonah is a euphemism or a metaphor, the foreshadowing of Jesus. He's in the belly of the fish for three days. Jesus is crucified, buried, resurrected. Jonah is a type and shadow of Jesus. That's why he says in the same way, Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. Show sell them, them, them the son of God. So what's incredible about that is, I need you to catch this, sometimes God will leave you in it long enough to make sure you never forget what being in it feels like. Michael! What if God kept him on the inside of the fish so he would know how to act when he outside? We inside. I'm, I'm finna run. No. See, some of y'all so excited about this summer, not because you're ready to wild out. It's because while you were inside, you got some lessons that's going to teach you how to act. I don't, y'all don't like me today. I got to go. I got to go. And while in the belly of the fish, Jonah does something that he should have did first. He prayed. I got to go. He, he's in the belly of the fish, but Jonah prays. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but in the belly of the fish. It, it, ooh, he prayed. He prayed, Michael, to the Lord. <clears throat> From the belly of the fish, bro, that, this crazy. From the belly of, see, because anybody can pray when you come out of it. Everybody can pray before you go through it. But if you really want to see my prayer life, catch me when I'm in the middle of something. See, it's six of y'all sitting on your row right now, and truth be told, you ready to act a fool in here right now, because you're like, I swear this dude be in my business every week. I'm going through something right now. I dare you to praise him in the middle of it. I dare you to thank him in the middle of it. I dare you to say it ain't perfect, it ain't good, but if the devil think this gonna break my relationship with God, God, I still praise you. I gotta stop. I gotta... Yep. Yeah. I'm trying not to preach. I promise I'm trying. I'm trying not to preach. I feel like a Baptist preacher today, but I'm telling you, because you ain't never had to shout in the middle of some stuff. You ain't never been in a situation in your life where you ain't have nobody in your phone you could call. You didn't even feel qualified to even talk to God. Then at some point you mustered up enough courage to say, God, I just need you. And God stepped inside of your situation. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my next praise ain't even for me. I'm praising God for you. This is an intercessory praise. Let everything. Jonah, can't you see Jonah in that fish? Stop being deep. Make this a movie in your head. Can't you see Jonah in that fish? Ain't no light. He's in the stomach. The storm was dark. The fish is dark. He's in the stomach. It's dark. He don't know where he at. He don't know what's going on. 
Day one, he's sitting there like, am I dead? Am I in hell? What's going on? Day two, God just, like, like, and God, like, I can get you out of this. There's only one prerequisite. Your praise is the key. Y'all y'all missed it. Your, your, your praise is the key. You got a problem, you better talk to me. You got a problem, you better talk to me. And he's just sitting in there. And here's what I get excited. On that third day, the scripture said, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, watch this, from inside the fish. Now, I didn't see this at the 9 o'clock. I'm just seeing this live on stage. It's called Theomusis, on the spot revelation. What's the important part of this scripture? We're going to read it together, okay? Then Jonah what? Pray. That ain't the most important word in the scripture. Not for me. That ain't everybody can pray. When the storm broke loose, everybody prayed. Come on now. Everybody prayed. You see it already. What's important to me? He prayed to his God. Why is that important, Pastor Mike? He has now been through so much. Well, he kind of has a right to lead God if he wants to. In his head, his problem could have stressed him out so much that he could have said, you know what, this church stuff ain't for me. How are you going to ask me to save murderers? How are you going to get mad at me because I didn't want to die? Then have me here? Man, forget all this God stuff. But Jonah understood the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Jonah said, problem, he my God. Prize, he my God. Up, he's still my God. But if I'm down, he's still my God. All the money in the bank, he's still God. No money in the bank, he's still God. That's why the writer said, I will bless the Lord. Ooh, I feel my help coming now, boy. Hear me? So hear me? Wait. Stop. Don't do it. Y'all trying to push me. This wasn't my... Look, look at me. I'm 40 now, right? So young PMJ, ready to go to church, okay? Young PMJ, like, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you're in the middle of something right now. You ought to thank God that you had enough sense to pray. Old PMJ see stuff differently. Yeah. Young, young PMJ, like, at least he prayed from the fish. Old PMJ is like, he never should have been in the fish in the first place and we gotta stop celebrating victories from battles we should have never fought in the first place where that relationship didn't break me you should have never been in that one in the first am i preaching i wish i had a hundred folk who will stop being fake and jump up and shout i done been in some dumb stuff that i never should have been in I've been with people I never should have been around. But if it had not been for the Lord, yeah. I, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. I just need you to high five 10 people and shout, he kept me, he kept me. I'm not preaching to everybody because some of y'all done made all the right decisions. Some of us done made some dumb decisions. Ended up in places we should have never been. In fights we should have never been in. Spent money we should have never spent. Loved people we should have never loved. Went places we should have never visited. But you ought to just bust a 360 and say he kept me. Me. He kept me. He kept me. Ooh, he kept me. Oh God, he, he kept me. <laughs> I'm trying to be dignified, but y'all don't know what God done kept some of us through. Just stop, right? Y'all don't know what God done kept some of us through. That's why I love how grandmama said I should have been dead. That's for six of y'all who, truth be told, you still don't know how you survived half the hell. Uh, uh, ooh. 
Jonah, Jonah inside the fish, right? He can't see, which means he's in a season of no vision. He has no friends with me. He's in a season that feels isolated. Please hear your pastor. He is not lonely. He feels lonely. Jonah is not lonely. He feels lonely. God is with him even when people ain't with him. Hear me? And Jonah prayed to the Lord God from inside the fish. What did he pray? PMJ is on the screen. He said, I cried to the Lord in great trouble. And he answered me. That's enough to tell the whole church up. I cried to the Lord in great trouble. I just didn't cry. What did he do, PMJ? He answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead and the Lord heard me. Verse 3, he says, you threw me into the ocean. I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. He says in verse 4, keep going. He says, then the Lord said, oh Lord. Then I said, oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence. You have driven me from your presence. Yet, Michael, yet, Michael, I will look once more towards your temple. Pause. Parenthetically digress. He says, I will look to your temple, Michael. I will look hmm, to your temple, Michael. I will look, Michael, to your temple. He didn't say I'm going to look to the hills. Because the Bible never said, look to the hills for help. The scripture says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help, comma, my help comes from the Lord. The reason they said the hill, because at the top of the hill, they practice astrology, Tauruses, all type of different things. There were magicians looking at the stars, trying to read your horoscope. The writer said, I'm not looking to the hill. I look to God. My help comes from the Lord. So we misinterpret that scripture because most of us are lost because we look in the people. Mm -mm. Verse 5, look what he says. I sink beneath the waves and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. Go back to verse 5. He says, I'm tired. It's wet. It's dark. I'm scared. I can't see nothing. And on top of that, seaweed wrapped. And they placed a crown. Seaweed. Right. They placed the crown and thought seaweed. You see, see, seaweed wrapped around my head. Verse six, he says, I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth, whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord, my God. I'm sorry, but this one word ought to tear this church up. You snatch me. See, y'all don't know how to shout because y'all new school mamas have conversations. Come on, Carrie, come on. You can do it, Carrie. Old school mamas used to snatch. It means hell thought they had Jonah, but he snatched them out of there. I dare you to just grab your neighbor and shake them a little bit and say, I'm snatching you out of depression. I'm snatching you out of low self-esteem. I'm snatching you out of debt. I'm snatching you out of pain. You ought to shout, snatch, snatch, snatch. Yes. I need some monitor. Yes. I said, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that God snatched me. You ought to find another neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm so glad God snatched me. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I, I gotta feel it. Everything is gonna be all right. Grab your neighbor by both of their hands. Shake your neighbor. You still ain't shook him right. Shake your neighbor. You still ain't shook him right. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Shake. 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 
Take your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil falls. He had me, but I.
another day that the Lord has kept me. Just another day. He says, he snatched me, watch this, from the jaws of death. Next verse, it says, as my life was slipping away, as my life was slipping away, Jonah says, I remember the Lord. My God. That's for every parent in the room. That's good. You maybe you got some grown kids and it's like, Pastor, I don't know what to do with them. I speak by faith that when life get dark, they gonna remember the Lord. And say, so I remember the Lord. And my earnest prayer went out to you and your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifice to you with songs of praise. That's why I'm so proud of our young people. I'm so grateful we got a church with men in it who just genuinely love God. Because I want you to see that ain't nothing weak about being a man who worships. Jonah says, at my lowest point, God, I'm going to sing a new song to you. Look what he says, and I will fulfill, listen to your pastor now, y'all missing it, all my vows. Mike, they missed it. You got to catch this. What's the vow? He told God, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. God tells him to do something he don't want to do. He runs away. Y'all missed it. How are you going to fulfill a vow if you're dying? His prayer was prayed from the posture of, I know you're going to get me out of this. Watch this. So I got a way does not mean God will always give you a way of escape. It means he will give you the strength to what? Now let me give you the, a, the B definition. When I say I got a way, I'm not just praising the fact that I did escape. I'm honoring God for how he gave me the strength to endure. Watch this while he was working on my escape. He says, for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Verse 10, 10 being the number of order. 10 fingers, 10 toes, that's stability. Watch what he says. The Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out on the beach. <laughs> on the beach. I don't know what you find yourself in. 
some of you in some real stuff. I prayed with a guy who got to turn himself in this week. All they could say was Pastor Mike, my, my, my little girl, my mom. He said, I just, I got to turn myself in Monday. I don't, he said, everything in me just want to run, man. I just, I said, man, I'm praying. I said, I don't, I said, I don't know what you want me to say. I said, I know a part of you want me to say, let me make a phone call. I, said, I don't know who to call. I said, I know a part of you want me to say, God told me to tell. I said, he said, no. He said, I listened to you last week. He said, I'm going to have to endure this one. So I'm going to have to endure it. And, and all I could think about is, he said to me, and I honestly should have never been in it in the first place. I don't know where you find yourself, man. What's my prayer for you? That when God lets this situation that you're in spit you out, you're going to be right where he wants you to be. <clears throat> Soon as I start worrying, worrying how the story is, when I let go and I let God, I let God have his way. That's when things started happening. When I stop looking at back then, when I let go and I let go. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind. I don't care how anointed you are, I don't care how rich you are, life can get hard. Life can get hard. I don't know what you find yourself in. It's crazy, been doing that since he was a baby. Just a, life would hit me and it always at the right time, he'll just walk in the room and just grab daddy. I want to pray for you right now, man, that whatever you find yourself in, I speak by faith, you are not alone I speak by faith that the grace of God is covering you God's giving you a type of mercy God's giving you a type of strength a type of peace to, that you're going to make it through this God I thank you in advance for the escape you already prepared I thank you in advance God that you're doing what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. God, I thank you, God, that you're preparing a way. You're doing what only you can do. And it's for that, God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
Can you give God the best praise you got right there? Come on, man. Come on, man. Give God the best praise you got, man. Best praise you got, Cordell. Make sure you get his number, Cordell, right there. I see you, man. God got you, bro. Hear me when I say this, and even I can literally see God building a hedge of protection around you. I speak this week, God gonna grace you, man, to some decisions to just stay stay the course and be who calls you to be. You got me, Cordell. You gonna connect with him? Listen, I love y'all, man, from the bottom of my heart. God's getting ready to do something special. I'm, I'm gonna say that better. God is doing something special. Somebody say amen. Listen to me when I say this. You may be here and you don't know Jesus. Hear me when I say this. You can be a teenager in your 20s, 30s, 70s, 80s. You don't know Jesus, man. I just want every head bow. You just lift your hands up and just repeat after me right where you are. If you need to give your life to Christ, all you got to do is say, Lord, come into my heart. Make me over again. I confess with my mouth, believe with my heart, she was raised from the dead. And right now, I am saved. That's all it took right there, man. Uh, hear me. If you don't mind, I'm not going to ask you to come up in front of everybody. If you get a second today, just text HOME to 28950. I have a team that literally this week they're going to call you. They told me like 4,000 people have gotten saved this year. And hear me when I say this, they are in the process of calling all 4,000. We got a team, even watching online, people from other states that are part of the ministry. And they, their, their ministry is they call every person. Hey, how you doing? We want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. To all my teenagers, y'all are our assignment, man. We want you to know that, man, it's a church that love you, that we, we care about you. That mom and daddy, not I won't always say what you want to hear, but they got your best interests at heart. And we want you to be everything that we feel God called you to be. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Come on, give God praise right there. Before you leave, before you log off, my parents came to church today. Can y'all praise God for my mom and dad sitting right there? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you so much. Listen, before you leave, do me a favor. I'm, um, I'm so overwhelmed right now. I'm so overwhelmed. It's one thing to preach. It's another thing to preach and know people get it. You know, and, and when I tell you, when I see you look in your eyes, when I see my teens, like, oh, when I see my brothers looking at me, like, yeah, yeah. That's how you know you're in the right place where God really wants you to be, man. So I'm excited about that. Hey, all right, so do me a favor. I need you to pull out your phone. Pull out your phones for me. I'm going to tell y'all something I ain't told the world yet, okay? I'm going to tell y'all something I ain't told nobody. Pull out your phone. I need you to go to iTunes. Go to iTunes. I need you to go to iTunes. I don't know when I'm going to tell the world, but I'm going to tell Rock City. They told me don't say nothing, but they can't tell me not to say nothing in my church. I want you to type in Pastor Mike Jr. Pastor Mike Jr., I'm going to drop a new project Friday, y'all. I'm excited about it. I'm dropping some new music Friday. <laughs> Hear me? So I want you to type in Pastor Mike Jr. I'm dropping a six-piece called I Got Away. It got I Got Away in it. Uh, it's this worship song I've been singing entitled I'm the Problem. It's on there. Uh, all my millennials, y'all may understand, but if you're in your 20s, you ain't going to get this. I was praying, and God, I reached out to somebody. I did a song with Big Boy from Outkast. <laughs> He on there, man, so all you got to do is go to iTunes, type in Pastor Mike Jr. It's entitled, show him the picture again. I got my hair done and everything. Come on, put the picture on the screen. It's Photoshop, real good. I'm cute, real. Mama, see? My mama told me I look good online. I don't look that good in person. She told me that before, yeah. But no, nah, man, it's entitled, I Got Away. Uh, let me tell you why this is, in, is, in, is special to me. This is the first time I'm doing something completely by myself. You know, so, yeah, man, so every, when I say by myself, every record label in the country right now just throwing all type of money at me to be a part of their record labels. Holy Spirit just kind of led me to be on my own and just do my own thing. So, man, if y'all would support me, it would mean the world to me. Look at your phone, it's $4.99. Don't go to Apple Music, you give me them $4.99. In Jesus' name, I don't even raise offerings, I'm raising an album right here. 
$4.99. But no, nah, man, I'm excited. If you order it today, you get I Got Away Today. And thank y'all so much for supporting me. To everybody watching all over the world, I can't wait to see you guys. We're getting ready to do a 30-city tour. Here's a good place to clap. Only three cities got tickets left, y'all. That's a good place to clap, man. We were on the phone talking about the tour. They was like, well, Pastor Mike, you're going to go last. I was like, okay, great. That, all that means to me is I get to do an altar call in every city I go to. We lay hands. It's going to be the only concert they go to where they lay hands on people. But I'm excited about it. Were you blessed today? Hey, Amen. I pray a simple prayer today is this. Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, we're going to throw you to Pastor James and them upstairs. We love you so much. Clap your hands. Tell God thank you. We love you. We love you. We are. Amen. Wow. That was, listen, let me tell you something. When you in a place and you can feel the tangible presence of yes. God, what an amazing message. Uh, you know. We inside, we inside. Yeah, and we when inside. you look at what God did today, um, through the worship experience, through the word, Pastor Mike, and how you flowed, yeah. it was just so powerful. And of course, we're excited about all that God is doing yes. with the I Got Away tour. I just want to—I I, got to pause. He just said it, but make sure you pre-order it. Yes. Go to iTunes. <laughs> uh, don't, don't. You know, we know you're gonna stream it later. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But right now, we want—we want that 4.99. We yes, want you to go ahead and order it and get the download <laughs> yes. uh, because you see the power, you see the anointing that's on His life. You see all that God is doing through His life and how many lives He's impacted and changed. And I, I've been so blessed. Wow, this was awesome. Yeah, this was, was and I see the Online, people are giving God praise. Of course, in the room is one thing, but online as well, to yes. see everybody praising God. Listen, if you have it and you say, you know what, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be a part of this ministry. Uh, all you got to do is text the word home. To 28950. Guys, giving God the best yes is the best. So give God your yes. Text home to 28950. Absolutely. And it's not too late to share this stream. If you say, you know what, that word blessed me. My cousins need to hear that. My yes. kids need to hear it. My Everybody. friends, my coworkers, go ahead and send it to them, uh, the link, and they can watch it uh, as well. It's still available. And family, we want to say this. The only reason we're able to reach people all over the world right. is because of your faithfulness and your continued yes. support in the area of giving. giving. So if you're giving today, how can you do that? You can do that by texting IROC and the amount you wish to give to 28950. You don't give to a church, but you give through a church. Ooh, that is right. And tomorrow morning at 7.21 yes. a.m., what's happening? Devo energy. Devo energy is going down. Make sure we're going to talk about this I'm, uh, we inside. Yeah, we we're going to talk about this we inside message and how you can apply it to your life. So do not miss Devo energy tomorrow yes. morning at 7.21 a.m. Central Standard Time. Listen, family, we love you. Yes. We thank God. We give God praise, honor, yeah. and glory for what he did today. He just keeps on showing Every up. Every single blowing week. Our blowing our mind. Let's higher. continue to pray for our past. Pastor, yes. to keep him and the family lifted. And also, don't forget, IGotAwayTour.com. Only three cities got tickets left. Three cities. Uh, IGotAwayTour.com. Get your tickets today because probably after the day, gonna be, it's going to be over. <laughs> the tickets all got away. It's already the tickets gone. got away. God bless you, family. We love you. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Peace. Peace.